Hi friends, Pastor Philip here. As many of you know, I just turned 60 in the month of September, past a big milestone and certainly one that has caused me to think and count the years. You know, there's an Irish saying that goes something like this, that birthdays are good for you because the more you have, the longer you live. Uh, and birthdays are good for you. They cause you to celebrate life. Uh, you sit down with friends and family and look back over God's goodness and mercy, and you receive some very cool gifts. Uh, birthdays are good for you, and they're good for you in the sense, too, that they do make you pause and, 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 and weigh your life and take an inventory of how you've been using your days. Um, the Bible tells us to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. And so I've been kind of counting the years. In fact, my, my daughters and my wife uh, surprised me with a wonderful video of, of dozens of friends who were sending me birthday greetings. And one of them, one of them quoted um, Warren Wearsby, who said, when it comes to birthdays, pay special attention to the ones that end in zero. And this is a big one, six zero. And I've been spending a bit of time reflecting on it, paying attention to my 60th birthday. And it's prompted me to reflect on uh, three things, or it has caused me to uh, meditate on three realities. Uh, my 60th birthday uh, prompts celebration. My 60th birthday prompts celebration. I have so much to be thankful for. As I said a few moments ago, God's goodness and mercy has chaperoned me all my life. I want to borrow the words of Psalm 103 and testify to the fact that God has been good. And I want to bless the Lord with all my soul. I don't want to forget his benefits. The benefit of being born into a Christian home with godly parents. The benefit of exposure to the gospel from my earliest days. The benefits of friends. The benefits of employment as a police officer and an aircraft engineer. I look back on my life and see how God has delivered me from evil. I look back on my life and wonder that God would ever set his love on me in Jesus Christ. Um, God provided me a beautiful wife and a wonderful family of three daughters, a great grandson and now a grandbaby. I pastored several churches, and for me, they've all been wonderful experiences. God's people have been good. Um, and I could go on multiplying um, God's goodness and mercy, the jump from uh, the UK to the US. All of this, for me, prompts celebration. God has given me more than I deserve, and he has withheld what I do deserve. When I left to come to the United States, my father read a verse to us in 2 Samuel 7, verse 18. It's, it's David looking back on his life. He, God has just made a covenant with him for the future. And David says, who am I? And what is my family that God has brought us this far? I remember watching uh, Bubba Watson receive the green jacket after uh, winning the Masters. And he was asked by the, the sports commentator what he thought, what was going through his mind. And he said, you know what? I don't know what to say. I never got this far in my dreams. I want to tell you, as a 60-year-old man, I've never got this far in my dreams. My 60th birthday has prompted celebration. Number two, it has produced confidence. My 60th birthday produces confidence because, you see, I've clacked up quite a few miles on the odometer of life. I've got a lot to look back on and learn from. And there are so many milestones of God's protection and provision and providence that it has really reinforced my faith. I have a confidence in God because um, God has proven himself faithful, trustworthy, a God who keeps his promises. When you read Psalm 23, verse 5, David says, Surely, Goodness and mercy has followed me all the days of my life. I believe with Sinclair Ferguson that Psalm 23 was written towards the end of David's life. He's looking back over his life and how God has shepherded him, provided, guarded, guided, 
so on. And when he gets to verse 5, there, there, there's enough road beneath his feet that he exclaims, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. The same goodness and mercy that has followed me. And you know what, friends? The longer we live, the stronger our faith should be. The resume is, has grown to a place of great confidence in God. Listen to these words by F.P. Meyer on Psalm 23, verse 5. Surely because God has never failed in the past. Surely because he, it would not become him to take in hand and not complete. Surely because he has pledged himself by exceeding great and precious promises. Surely because the united testimony of his saints attests to the fact that he never fails or forsakes. Surely because if he has set his love on us in eternity... He is not likely to forget us in time. Surely shall never come a day in our earthly pilgrimage in which God shall not be at our side with goodness and mercy. See, David lived long enough to know that God was enough. I've lived 60 years. I've seen the good hand of God upon my life. And, and I have a confidence about the future. Here's the last thought. Uh, my 60th birthday prompts celebration, produces confidence, and preaches consecration. I want to number my days, because I want to tell you that there's not a big number left. And I want to apply my heart to wisdom. There's more of the road behind me than there is before me. And so it causes me to want to step out with greater boldness and greater urgency. Because the night comes when no man shall work. John 9 verse 4. I want to remind myself of something I read a while ago. Tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life. And now that I've hit that big 6-0, I, I, I take those tomorrows uh, I, 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 ever more uh, special. Came across this lovely story about a, an old preacher who um, preached a sermon on his 100th birthday. And when he was asked how you get to be a hundred, the old country preacher said this, it's easy. You get to 99 and then you be very careful. And you know what? As I finish this little devotion, Ephesians 5 verse 15 says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Be very careful. Redeem the time. Know what the will of God is and do it. I sense that more than ever. I, 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 I've hit 60. I'm going to be very careful to focus my life, my energies, my days on the things that truly count. I haven't done that perfectly. There are regrets that come with my 60th birthday, but I resolve to step forward into the future committed to the fact that, that seeking God's kingdom first is the first business of life. Um, let me quote in closing, um, one of my favorites is Winston Churchill. And when he returned to 10 Downing Street in London after being reelected for the second time, he was pretty old. And so some people criticized him and criticized his advanced age. A year later, a reporter cornered him and kind of asked him about that. He said, you know what, at, at 78, uh, are you going to make an announcement anytime soon about retirement? Here's what Churchill replied, not until I'm a great deal worse and the country is a great deal better. It's no time to retire. Um, we need to commit ourselves to making our families better, our walk with Christ better, our country better through being good neighbors and being salt and light. The clock is ticking. I hear it in my ear. And while the, my 60th birthday prompts celebration and produces confidence, above all, it preaches consecration. John Wooden said, make every day a masterpiece. That's what I want to do. Why don't you join me?